Morla David Adonai Roi Lo Echsar Bino Deshi Arbitseni Alme Menuchot Yena Haleni Nafshi Yishovev Yancheni Vamagle Tzedek Laman Shemo Ka Gam Ki Elech Begates Almavet Lo Ira Ra Ki Ata Imadi Shiftacha Umishantecha Hema Yena Hamuni Ta Aroch Lefanai Sholcha Neged Sorai Dishanta Vashemen Roshi Kosi Rivaya Ach tov v'chesed yir defuni, kol yemei chayai, v'shafti b'veit Adonai li'orech yamim. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He has me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He guides me on paths of righteousness. He revives me for the sake of his glory. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no harm for you are with me. Your staff and your rod, they comfort me. You set a table inside of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall abide in the house of the Lord forever. Leonard, I want you to know when, uh, when you and Eudis left for Baltimore, we missed you a few years ago when you went away. Ellie and Susie, we missed your parents, quite honestly, because your parents were these two kind, cute people who just always had a lot of banter between them, a lot of laughter going on, uh, seemed so very comfortable in their own skin with a genuine good nature. They, they would have won my vote for cutest couple. They always could. They would. They could. Leonard, I know you met Eudis on a blind date, and you fell in love, and what was true back then continued true throughout her entire life. She was simply a, a genuinely warm, genuinely caring woman. Uh, you know, all, all I hear when I read the news every day is we're debating things, right? The debate. Everyone's fact-checking. You don't have to check these facts. Everything I'm giving you is the truth. We, that's the beautiful thing. We could all agree on these facts. She was modest and unassuming. She didn't put on any airs. She didn't look down on anyone. She did not have an arrogant bone in her body. Just a sweet lady. As a mother, I know she was always there for you when you needed her for things large and small. She'd be there, she would show up, she'd be involved in your activities and PTA and other school-related activities. As a grandmother, she was more than happy to spend time with her grandchildren. When either of you needed to be away, she would stay with the grandchildren. The door of their home was always home to both of you and your families your entire life. She went to many a high school event in her day. She demonstrated warmth in her every action and in her mannerisms and in her speech. And she was very organized. She followed through on details. A very capable, very smart lady. You know a lot about her simply by saying that she served as the senior rabbi secretary for a period of years. I mean, that alone means what? She was able to handle a lot of different situations, a lot of different personalities, but able to keep a pleasant disposition no matter what, and very, very trustworthy. 
She was always very active, loved to travel, uh, played tennis and bridge, loved music, loved the city of Cleveland. She enjoyed her work later on at NCJW. Dress designer days was a high moment for her. Uh, Eudis could also be a strong person. I know that she made sure the trains ran on time in your home. Leonard, you said it best. You said, I always had the final word, but I okayed it with her first. <laughs> it would be possible for me just to stop here, that to say that she supported all of you in your activities, she showed up to your events, but it's something more, and it came out as we were speaking. She taught the two of you, her daughters, how to express yourselves, how to express your feelings. She would ask you to articulate your feelings even when you were very young. And to say to your child, you know, tell me about it. Tell me what's on your mind. Uh, Maybe the most important thing a parent can ever say to a child. <coughs> because it means I value what you have to say. It means I respect what you have to say. It means I'm ready to listen to your voice because your voice matters to me. It means your words are valuable. It helps a child develop who they are. It helps the child to express their identity and to be secure in their own skin. And uh, frankly, the two of you, Ellie and Susan, you both seem very comfortable in your own skin, very expressive and honest and caring. Ellie and Susie, I would vote for you as cutest couple, except that I know that you're, you're married. And of course, your families have stayed very, very close together. And this would certainly be your mother's greatest satisfaction. She taught you that, to be loyal to your family. She didn't just teach you that, she modeled that. She lived that way in her hands. Leonard, you married, you moved to Indiana for your medical internship and residency, and you just supported the household as a medical technologist. She stopped working only outside the home uh, because she became a, a mother and homemaker inside the home. Uh, later, she would take more classes and ultimately did work as a bookkeeper and as an accountant. She had been the youngest of three in a close-knit family, and her sisters, Ruth and Zelda, were always very close to her. They maintained their closeness. She was a caregiver throughout her life. She cared for your parents, Leonard. She's a wonderful daughter, of course, to her own parents. She would visit Menorah Park, especially after her father had died, to see her mother, and she loved them both. She loved extended family. I know she was a wonderful aunt and enjoyed being included in Shabbat dinners. She was a giver, and you felt it. And uh, I know that uh, Len and Bruce, as you married in the family, you felt it too. Uh, she didn't just care for her family, she adored her family. Uh, Ellie and Susie, you said it best that in recent years, as her health declined and she needed you more and more, you were there because you were simply giving back all that she had given you. Her lessons had now become part of you. Your instincts had now been trained by this wonderful lady. I know, Leonard, soon after you met, you and Yudas were students in that psychology class, right? The teacher said, be careful, a number of marriages have been produced from this class, from people sitting next to each other. And she was sitting next to you during that class. Uh, as I said, we debate a lot of things in public life, but uh, on this there is no debate. Uh, you were married 68 years, and she became a lifetime partner to you. I know you check eyes, right? You had the right eyes to see that she was going to be your lifetime partner. She lived with a good name and she died with a good name. And now I want to call Ellie and Susie up for, the, for some words. part right now is trying to erase the past three years and just remember mom before she got sick. For the past three years, we looked at the woman in front of us and saw our mother's face and felt her love and we got kisses sometimes and best of all, a smile from time to time. But there were no words, no conversation, no apparent understanding. We would try to tell her about our kids, which had always made her smile but there would be no response. It was gut-wrenching. But over a five-day period in July, mom surfaced a few times. One day I went to see her and she lifted her left arm, which she never did. And she literally pulled me in for a hug and I started to cry. 
and she held me tighter and tighter. I laid in her arm for 10 minutes, but I felt like I had my mom. Another day, right nearby, she saw dad coming into her room and she seemed so excited and she said haltingly, there's dad. Of course, I started to cry and after giving dad a kiss, which she had not done in some, some long time, she wiped my tears. For those two moments, I got to be her daughter again. Without saying too much, my mom supported me through many knee surgeries. She always allowed me just a little self-pity, but then gave me the strength to move forward and keep walking. When I was an adult, every time I needed her, she left her work, sometimes left dad, and came to give me the extra pair of hands I needed or whatever it was I needed. She was just there. I knew I could count on her, always. But now here are some things that made mom mom. First, when you laugh so hard and deeply, you cry. It was so strange at first, we, as young children, we couldn't understand that. But once we understood it, mom's crying laughing would become contagious and we'd all be crying laughing just from watching her. Then there's that amazing skill of putting on lipstick perfectly without a mirror, even in a moving car. We couldn't understand how she did that. Again, we were very young. But when we got a little older and the truth came out, dad explained that after they went out on dates, she had to reapply her lipstick in the dark behind her dorm so that her house mother wouldn't suspect anything. <laughs> this was a talent she continued until just about two and a half years ago. The caregivers were amazed. <laughs> Stamina. I'm not sure I inherited that trait ever. Mom could keep going and going, like the time I was ready to stop shopping for my senior prom dress and she would not have it until we found the one, which we did after countless stores. And lest we forget the Garber goodbye, while she had partners in crime, her sister Zelda and Ruth, a goodbye was not a single word or action. Let me explain. You said goodbye and started talking again. Repeat this process up to three to four times. And then when your husband children or whoever else is waiting says we have to leave now or hang up the phone that is when you must end the goodbye that has always stayed with us as we never said goodbye or kissed mom just one time in the last 18 months we kissed her said goodbye and even though she didn't necessarily participate we repeated the process over and over and if she waved or kissed us back, you got it. We repeated the process even more. And while we are both proud to say we have two great parents, only mom could teach us how to be a mom. If I am half the mom she was for all her life, then she taught me well. Mom and dad got to be 90 years old because she made sure they did. She watched over her and dad always made sure they were eating well, keeping their cholesterol down, working out, well, they tried. Anything to keep them healthy. And she did it, 90 years old. And despite her illness, her body continued to, to live because it was so strong. Our dad just lost his partner of 68 years. He lost so much of her over the last few years. And even though he couldn't see her, he held her hand and nuzzled her cheek and her forehead every day. He sat with her and told her he loved her every day. Mom adored her son-in-laws. She thought of them as sons. She didn't think of them as in-laws and they in turn got to have moms that they loved and cherished. Mom was so happy when she was with her grandchildren 
from when they were little and adorable, what can I say, to being with them as young adults. She was so proud of each of them and their accom accomplishments. They got to spend time with Elise in Florida, and she, she got to know Evan and see the happiness he gave her. She saw Joel achieve his career goals and excel in his chosen field. And while he lived at home when they first moved here, got to spend more time with her. It was her dream to attend a grandchild's wedding. So she spoke her mind to Matt and made it clear she wanted to, to go to a wedding. Boy, did she dance at Rachel and Matt's wedding one year later. Adam was next in line. She was thrilled when he brought Lindy to Cleveland to meet them. While she seemed to understand they were engaged at the beginning, it was very hard that she was not able to join us at the actual wedding. The older she became, her love of celebrating all the great nieces and nephews, bar and bat mitzvahs and weddings was truly her joy. Mom, you always were caring, loving, giving, and adoring of us your family, your extended family, and your dearest friends. There isn't anything you wouldn't have done for anyone in your life. You will be in our hearts always. And while Alzheimer's robbed you of all of your memories, it did not rob us of our memories of you. going to call on the grandchildren, Adam and Elise. hard for me to just speak um, candidly, so I I wrote uh, Grandma a letter, a, gram a letter to Grandma Eudice. Thank you for being our Grandma Tucker. Thank you for being present for every one of our shows, recitals, concerts, competitions, and graduations, celebrations, and disappointments despite being over 300 miles away. Thank you for being our biggest cheerleader at these events, despite these performances being less than off-Broadway. Thank you for learning that there is, in fact, a difference between my smoked turkey sandwich and Joel's turkey sandwich when making our lunches during mom and dad's yearly getaway trip. Those annual visits were so special to Joel and I as we got to spend such quality time with you and Grandpa, we wouldn't trade those memories for the world. Thank you for always wanting to brag about your grandchildren, even up to the very end when I would see you would still look around for anyone that was around to tell them that one of us was visiting. Thank you for teaching us how to cook traditional Jewish recipes, ones that we can pass on from generation to generation. That chicken soup has already made itself useful for our hubbies after GI and hernia operations or hospitalizations. We know, we know, it's all about the kosher chickens. Thank you for showing us that truly the best way to dance is to dance like no one is watching. Arms up, smiles on, fun always. Thank you for taking those Florida trips. It's an amazing revolution when, revelation when you're able to get to know your grandparents as the people they are in addition to the loving grandparents you've always known. Evan and I are so lucky to have shared in such great conversations and experiences with you during those years. 
Thank you for showing us what a strong woman looks like. One that knows how to never give up, stand behind your decisions, and know how to put others before yourself. Thank you for showing us unconditional love from the first moment you met your grandchildren. How many grandchildren are lucky enough to go on a bar bat mitzvah trip with their grandparents to New York City and Toronto, Canada, and actually enjoy that trip? Thank you, Grandma Tucker, for being without a doubt the most loving, caring, supportive, gracious, and beautiful grandma, mother, sister, and wife that any one of us could have asked for. We love you always and we'll miss you forever. Thank you all for being here today. <clears throat> I believe that grandma was aware of her surroundings even as her conditions worsened. The unwavering love and care and attention that she received from her family didn't go unnoticed to her. I believe it gave her comfort in the face of what must have been a very scary and frustrating experience. Her family's love and support gave her strength and courage to keep going. It wasn't just the love and support that grandma received that sustained her though. It was the strength and perseverance within her. I don't recall these qualities so much on my own but I've been told that grandma could be a pretty hard-headed woman, a woman of deep convictions. These qualities certainly showed in how she handled herself in her final years. She could have easily let her illness consume her. You couldn't fault someone in her condition if they gave up or gave in, but this was not grandma. I never recall her choosing to stay home or stay in her room. She never chose that path. She kept walking until it was at her own peril she kept talking until the words escaped her, and she kept smiling until her muscles wouldn't allow. Friendship was too important to her, family was too important, and life was too important. In this way, Grandma exemplified the most basic tenet of the Jewish faith, the infinite value of life. The way she conducted herself in her final years was inspirational, and when she could no longer conduct things for herself, her loved ones conducted them for her. And I know she was overflowing with love and joy and gratitude for that, even if she couldn't show it. But this period of time when Grandma lived with dementia was just a small fraction of her life. It's etched in the front of our minds right now, but in time, the struggle of her final years will fade to the background and the memories of her as an independent woman will prevail. She was a child once and then a young woman and a wife and a mother and we, the grandchildren, are the most fortunate beneficiaries of the remarkable woman, wife and mother that she was. We remember being relentlessly supported and encouraged by her playing board games and card games with her and being taught to play by the rules, building forts in the bedroom and being reminded that we'll, we'll ha we will have to clean it up when we're done. We remember seeing her eat chopped liver and beef tongue and thinking it was gross. We remember pizza without cheese and lactate pills, cinnamon raisin toast and chicken soup and matzah all year round. We remember going to trips to the JCC and the Beechwood Mall, science museums, amusement parks, and the zoo. We remember seeing her in the crowd at the dance recitals and little league games and band concerts and graduations. We remember hearing about our family history and heritage, learning about Jewish values and traditions, dancing with her at bar, bar mitzvahs and weddings, being encouraged to pop the question and make her granddaughter a bride, being made to feel proud of who we are and what we've accomplished, and being loved unconditionally. We honor her by taking care of ourselves, by taking care of each other, by putting family first, by setting high standards and not selling ourselves short, by persevering in the face of adversity, 
by continuing to learn and grow, by being a good person, by continuing our family traditions, by maintaining a Jewish identity, by helping raise the next generation, and by living life to the fullest. In these ways, we live like Grandma lived, and her spirit remains in our lives. We love her with all our hearts, and we're so blessed to have her as our Grandma. Let's all rise now for the memorial prayer. May we remember all of the worthy and the righteous deeds that she performed in the land of the living. God is now her portion. May she rest in peace. And we all say amen. Let's be seated, everyone. We want to offer our condolences to the family. We want to offer our condolences to Leonard, uh, to Susan and Ellen, Len and Bruce, to the grandchildren, Rachel and Matt, Adam and Lindy, Joel and Elise. We want to make mention that the family will be receiving friends for the Shiva visitation following services today at the uh, residence of Sammy and Jenny Rosenberg. That's in Orange Village. The address is 3927 West Ash Lane, 3927 West Ash Lane in Orange Village. That will be immediately following service to, services today. We're going to pause in our service momentarily to arrange the processional, which will take us to the burial spot to complete the service. Uh, please remain in your seats for another moment or two. The pallbearers, however, should now come forward. 